Hi, this is Pastor Sue Ulrich of Locust Grove United Church of Christ here in York. So glad that you could join us today. So let's gather our bulletins and join together in our call to worship. Jesus began his ministry to the world, led by the Spirit into the wilderness. As, As we, we begin our Lenten journey, let us be led by the Spirit, even into the uncomfortable places. In those 40 days, and in that place, Jesus was faced with hunger, doubt, and testing. As we seek to follow Jesus, we would be led even into the uncomfortable choices. Jesus left the wilderness faithful and obedient to God, rejoicing in the one whom he trusted. As we continue on our path to faithfulness, we will be led by our Christ, rejoicing in the Lord our God. And now let us join in our opening hymn, Just As I Am. Oh, 
As we journey in this season of Lent, we ask that you would equip us to live fully in this moment as we are led into the wilderness. Make your ways known to us and teach us your truth. Lead us in the way you would have us go. Be patient with us, we pray, for we long to be faithful. In your name we pray. Amen. Savior, when in tears and dust, lo, we bow to you in trust. When repentant to the skies, scarce we lift our weeping eyes. Mindful how you suffered pain, that God's love in us might reign. Help us claim what we would be, hear our solemn litany. By your helpless infant years, by your life of want and tears, may your days of sore distress in the savage wilderness, by the dread mysterious hour of the insulting tempter's power, Turn, O oh, turn a favoring eye, hear our solemn litany. By your hour of dire despair, by your agony of prayer, by the cross, the nail, the thorn, piercing spear and torturing scorn, by the gloom that veiled the skies, or the dreadful sacrifice, listen to our humble cry, hear our solemn litany. By your deep expiring groan, by the sad sepulchre stone, by the vault whose cold abode held in vain the rising God. Oh, from earth to realms of light, Christ restored in power and might, listen, listen to the cry of our solemn litany. Our epistle reading for today comes to us from 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning with verse 18. For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit, through whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who disobeyed long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. Our gospel reading for today comes to us from the gospel of Mark, the first chapter, beginning with verse 9. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open, and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, You are my Son, whom I love, my beloved. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the desert, 
And he was in the desert 40 days being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of God's holy word. And will you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you that you have brought us together today to listen to your word and to sing hymns of praise to you. And now we ask that your Holy Spirit would speak to us through the words of song, through the words of scripture, and through the words you have given me. And may all that we do and all that we say bring you honor and glory and praise. For we ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. The wilderness, the desert, just those words put images in our minds, don't they? Perhaps we see the hot sun barreling down. We imagine thirst and hunger and nothing around for miles. It's not a place one would go to on purpose, certainly not somewhere one would think of going on a vacation. Perhaps there are rocks, maybe animals, and no place to rest. It's certainly nowhere I would go, unless I definitely had a way out. And yet, haven't we all been there? Haven't some of us been to the desert, the wilderness at times in our journey, in our walk with the Lord? Maybe we wouldn't say that the devil was there attempting or testing us, or maybe we would. Yet I would imagine most of us have had our own times or two in the desert. Jesus had his time there right after his baptism. Perhaps you recognize the passage of scripture I just read today. It sounded familiar, and that's because it is. We read this passage last month when I preached part of my sermon at the baptismal font when we read about the baptism of Jesus. The lectionary readings that I use to write my sermon each week included a part of that lesson today, but also included the temptation of Jesus in the desert, as today is the first Sunday in the season of Lent. We know that we are in the Gospel of Mark when we see how brief our passage is. Mark really was a man of few words. For two whole verses are all we get about Jesus' time in the desert, in the wilderness. No dialogue between Jesus and the devil. No discussion about stones being turned into bread. None of the temptations are even mentioned. All of them, all of that is left out. All that we get are these two verses. At once the Spirit sent him out into the desert. He was in the desert 40 days being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended him. Not much, is it? Yet even in these few verses, there are a few things we learn. First, we learn that Jesus didn't journey into the desert all on his own. He was sent or driven into the wilderness. As he came up out of the water of baptism and heard God call him God's beloved son, he then felt the Spirit driving him, sending him into the wilderness. I would imagine it wasn't a place even Jesus wanted to go. After all, who would want to be tempted and tested for 40 days by the devil? 
Who would want to be in such a place? But this was a journey Jesus had to take. This was the path before him. Jesus probably didn't want to go in the desert any more than we do. But we get the feeling he had no choice. The Spirit drove him there. But there was a reason for his time there. And as one author writes, it was to learn to face down the adversary, the devil, so that he might be prepared to do so over and over again over the next three years. Another thing we learn from these two brief verses is that Jesus was not alone. In addition to the devil and the wild animals, Mark tells us that angels attended to, ministered to Jesus. He wasn't alone. Although we had to this, do this time in the desert and be tempted and tested by the devil, while he was there, angels ministered to him. The Gospel of Matthew tells us that at the end of the 40 days, the angels came and ministered to him. Mark just tells us they were there. Perhaps they gave him strength during this time of testing. Perhaps it just lets us know that Jesus was not alone. So what about you and me? Perhaps we have been through our own times in the desert, in the wilderness. Perhaps one of the reasons you and I do not really need to know all the details of what it must have been like for Jesus in the desert is because we have been there, haven't we? Times when we have been tempted and tested. Times when we have felt like throwing in the towel and walking away from our faith. Times when the devil has made walking away look pretty good and the temptation has been great. Jesus may have faced different temptations than you or I might face, but we know what it likes, feels like to be tempted just the same. And we know what a wilderness feels like because we have gone through one a time or two in our lives. Perhaps this past year, has felt like a very long walk in the desert, in the wilderness. We have had those times when we felt all alone and struggled to hang on. Yet even in the midst of those difficult times, there are things you and I have in common with Jesus and his time in the wilderness. Perhaps we too were driven there, and we were not alone either. I know in the difficult times of our lives, we can imagine and feel like we are all alone. We can feel as though our prayers bounce off the ceiling and just fall to the floor. We can feel as though God has abandoned us and that we are left to fend for ourselves. And we begin to wonder if any of this is real and if God is with us at all. Or we can be at a play, good place in our faith, in our walk with the Lord. Things can be going really good, and then boom, temptations come, struggles, a faith crisis. If you or someone you know are ready to give up, I encourage you to hang in there, to continue in this journey, and to know that God is working in ways you just can't see. God has not left you. Remember what we learned from these two verses in Mark. We may not want to go there into the desert, into the wilderness, but God is guiding and leading us, and that we are not alone. I read recently that perhaps our greatest temptation is the temptation to think that God is not present in our lives to believe the lie that God has forgotten us or isn't with us. Perhaps in our wilderness testing, we have fallen for that lie. Remember how the angels ministered to Jesus and remember that God is ministering to you as well. You are not alone. Last month, when I preached on part of this passage, I was at the baptismal font, 
And I reminded you that you are God's beloved. And I encourage you to grow into that word and to realize how beloved you are by God. You are God's beloved daughter. You are God's beloved son. So I invite you now to hang on to that word in the wilderness. I invite you to take that word with you in this difficult time, even in the desert. I believe Jesus did. For God said that Jesus was God's beloved, and before the waters of baptism were barely dry, he was sent into the wilderness. He was sent by the Spirit. Perhaps we are too. Now, if you are like me, you heard those words and thought they were nice and then forgot them. Not so fast. Today, God has brought us here again, perhaps to drive home the idea that we are God's beloved, so that when we face those times of crises in our faith, like many have during this past year, that we are reminded that God, who calls us beloved, has not left us, but journeys with us in this wilderness, in the desert. As our faith is tested and we are tempted to hang it up, we are reminded through the temptation of Jesus that we can do this. Yes, our temptations will not be the same as his, and yes, our testing will be different, but the truth remains the same. We are God's beloved children, and we are not alone. God is with us. So I invite you now to close your eyes and listen to a poem by Reverend Jan Richardson. Let it fill you and touch you. It is called Beloved is Where You Begin. If you would enter into the wilderness, do not begin without a blessing. Do not leave without hearing who you are, beloved, named by the one who has traveled this path before you. Do not go without letting it echo in your ears. And if you find it is hard to let it into your heart, do not despair. That is what this journey is for. I cannot promise this blessing will free you from danger, from harm, from hunger or thirst, from the scorching of sun or the fall of the night. But I can tell you that on this path there will be help. I can tell you that on this way there will be rest. And I can tell you that you will know the strange graces that come to our aid only on a road such as this, that fly to meet us bearing comfort and strength, that come alongside us for no other cause than to lean themselves toward our ear and with their curious insistence whisper our name. Beloved, beloved, beloved. I invite you to open your eyes now. I hope we can all embrace that name and take it into our hearts. For those of us who are journeying in the desert, the wilderness now, I pray it will give you refreshment. And for those of us who are not there now, let it fall over us like waters of baptism, refreshing us and readying us for our next time in the desert, in the wilderness, reminding us that perhaps God will be the one driving us there and that definitely we will not be alone. Amen. Believe it or not, we have no birthdays and no anniversaries this week. I'm not sure we've had a week like that in a long time. <laughs>
But we do have a prayer concern. We want to pray for Glenn Dasher, who is having some health concerns right now. And we definitely want to pray for the folks of Texas and Oklahoma. And I, I can't remember the names of all of the states that have been affected by the tremendous cold that they are facing. And for those who have lost family members and their homes have been damaged, we want to lift all of them in our prayers. And let us continue to pray for those suffering with COVID-19. We're thankful the numbers are doing a little better. We pray everyone will continue to practice social distancing and wearing masks and Hopefully one day, very soon, we won't have to hear that name ever again. And we wanna pray for, for all who are waiting to get the vaccine as well. I know the weather has hindered some of those opportunities, but to pray for, for good weather, that all who want to can receive the vaccine. So let us go before our Lord in prayer. Gracious God, Lord, it is such a comfort to know that the things that Jesus went to so many went through went through so many of them. He, we know He can relate to us. He can understand how we feel. He went through a difficult time in that wilderness, in that desert. Can't even imagine how difficult that was for him. But Lord, you know that all of us, or many of us, have gone through our own wildernesses, our own deserts. Times when we have struggled in our faith, when our enemy has tugged and pulled at us to maybe not turn stones into bread, but to turn away from our faith. To maybe not to get us to do the other things he tempted Jesus to do, but to get us to walk away and to believe it's not real. Sometimes our times of temptation, our times of testing come in the midst of the difficult struggles we've gone through, the loss of a loved one, the loss of our health, the loss of employment. And as we walk in that wilderness, in that difficult time, we ask, Lord, for you to be with us. We know you're there. To give us the courage, to give us wisdom, to give us strength, and those times when you have driven us into the desert so that we will grow in our faith, the times that are painful just the same, help us, Lord, to lean on you and trust in you. Because none of us want to go into a desert, Lord. None of us want to struggle or be tested or tempted. But it's part of our walk. It's part of our journey what happens in life. This past year has been a time of testing for all of us. It's been difficult. But we know, Lord, that you have not left our side. Even if we feel as though our prayers are not listened to, even though we feel as if you are not there, we know you are. Give us the courage to face every day and thank you for calling us your beloved and reminding us of that word so that when we are tempted to walk away and then we are tempted to say, this is enough, you remind us how much we mean to you and that you've never left us. We are beloved by you. How wonderful that is, Lord. To let those words wash over us it doesn't mean life will get any easier. There are struggles and trials we face. It's just a reminder 
And our gracious Father, our Mother, our Parent is with us through everything we go through. And we are not alone. We ask, Lord, that you would be with Glenn this week and Gail, that you would touch Glenn with your healing presence and help him at this difficult time. We pray for those in our congregation who are mending from surgeries. We pray for those who have fallen and injured themselves. We pray for all who feel isolated because of this COVID. That you would remind them you are with them. This isolation is not easy. We lift up all of the folks in Texas and Oklahoma who are dealing with weather they just don't get, weather we're familiar with. We lift up the families who have lost loved ones, who are struggling right now. We ask for your comfort and your peace to be with them. Be with those who do not have water or heat or electricity. Please let aid come to them soon, Lord, and be with those who are working on those issues. And thank you for all of those who have gone to that state to help, all the plumbers that are coming to help with all the broken pipes, all the people that are offering their help and support. Thank you for that, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that you would be with all who are suffering with COVID, that you would help them to get well and Help everyone who wants to to get a vaccine real soon. Let those su the supplies come soon so that everyone can have a vaccine. Because we long for the day we don't hear that word anymore. Thank you for hearing our prayer, for listening to us, Lord. When we cry out, and when we gently pray, in just a whisper, you are always there. So let us join our voices together as we pray the prayer our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for bringing your offering to the church and for mailing it in and for supporting our congregation every week. So let us join together now in our offertory prayer. God of the wilderness, we give these offerings in gratitude, rejoicing in the abundance of your gifts to us. We give these offerings in faith, trusting that you will provide for our needs. We give these offerings in hope, knowing you can use them to spread your love in this world. And with these offerings, we give ourselves. May we live with generous hearts, with open hands. In your name we pray. Amen. And now let's join in our closing hymn, I am yours, O Lord.
were taken, and I'm happy about that, but there are still a few here, if anyone would like to come to the church and pick theirs up. This week, our service will be about the theme of salt, and I'll be leading it this week. So let us join now in our benediction. Go now and live in the spirit of your baptism, even when you were led into wild and hard places. With repentance and trust, we give ourselves to God, and with fasting and prayer, may we strengthen ourselves against the ways of the tempter. And may God enfold us in tender and lasting love. May Christ be beside us in times of struggle. And may the Spirit guide us back to the path whenever we stray, that we may keep the covenant. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. God bless you.